This is going to be a chocolate sourdough variation. And I know sourdough, you're thinking sour. It's not going to be sour. It's going to be sweet. Uh, this is a, mm, we consider it a breakfast bread. Uh, so if I make a loaf of chocolate sourdough, it's going to get eaten for breakfast. Uh, same kind of sourdough you would know how to make if you were to watch the sourdough round series of videos or playlists or sourdough sandwich bread. It's the same. We're just adding a little bit of sugar to the dough, some cocoa powder, a little coconut oil, recipe in the description. Um, so you can see kind of how this all fits together. But I'm going to actually do an auto lease. So here we go. You can see the dough. We've got water, we've got flour. Uh, it's bread flour, all purpose, and wheat, recipe in the description. But uh, I'm gonna do an auto here, and I don't normally, but because I am going to be adding oil, some fat, I do wanna hydrate my flour as best I can, so I'm gonna to choose to do an auto lease, which I don't normally do, but I am. So auto lease, 30 to 60 minutes. In the meantime, here we go. Cocoa powder, coconut oil. We're just gonna melt it down, incorporate it, make it nice and smooth, and then cool it off. We want it to be you know, below body temperature. Uh, we don't want hot oil going into our dough. So auto lees ready. We've got our cocoa, coconut oil ready. And now starter salt, sugar, and then the chocolate mixture. And now comes the work. And I know I zipped through this the way I edited it, but it took me seven minutes and it was a fight. Man, getting all that fat in there with the starter and the sugar and the salt, um, I really wrestled with it. And you can see, like, I decided to do, like, some two-handed stretch and fold uh, to try and get rid of some of the marbling. And you can see, like, it's streaky chocolate and then regular-looking sour dough. And I just, you know, kind of fought with it for a good seven minutes until it really started to, to smooth out in terms of color. I put it in a container. And for this first phase of, like, before I do the first stretch and fold, I'm going to let it hang for 60 minutes. Uh, I, want it to, I wanted it to like really rest and kind of relax so I'd be able to stretch it really nice. And you can see here, after 60 minutes, here comes the first stretch and fold. I'm taking it out of the container into this long stretched out strip on purpose because now we got to go chocolate chips. So we're putting our chocolate chips into our dough on the first stretch and fold. And, you know, roll it up, tuck, tuck, fold, fold, create a little bit of tension. And you can see, you know, it's kind of gotten more of a smoother looking chocolate color to it. Back in the container. This time, just a 30 to 40 minute window of time before we go again, second stretch and fold. Some of the chocolate chips might fall off. It's okay, just poke them back in there. And, you know, regular stretch and fold technique, bringing some corners together from nine to 12, from three to nine, and nine to 12, 12 to six, three to nine, something like that. Compass, north, south, east, west. Uh, just, you know, create a little bit of tension. And then put it away, here we go, third time, same thing. You know the drill, stretch and fold. 30 to 40 minutes later. And then we catch a fourth one, same technique, nothing fancy. Tuck, tuck, stretch, stretch, fold, fold, create some tension, stick the chocolate chips back in if they fall out, cover it up, and here we go into bulk fermentation. Mm, maybe six hours later. So I started this at three o'clock. And then, let's see, it's probably done stretching and folded around five, 5.30, something like that. And then, at 10 o'clock, it was time to put it into a banneton and put it in the fridge. And you can see this thing looks like a kind of a brick, right? Like this thing's dense. And you know, it's got the fat in it, um, chocolate chips, the cocoa powder. And you know, I, I do kind of encourage it apart, pull it apart a little bit, and then you know, shape it into you know, a round, and then cover it with a towel, let it rest for 30 minutes, and then I came back and put it in my banneton. And I decided to use a towel in my banneton because I was thinking, I don't want a chocolatey banneton. I'd rather keep it clean. So that's what I did. And then refrigerate overnight. Here we are, seven in the morning. And it is time to bake some bread. We're gonna do Dutch oven so we can create some steam and get some oven spring. And you can see this thing, like on the parchment paper, it looks dense. That is a small 500 gram batch of dough. But don't worry, it's gonna do its thing. It's gonna be amazing. Check this out, here we go. I'm gonna score it in a square. Uh, and you're gonna, you know, as you score it, you're gonna hit like some chocolate chip speed bumps. And just do what you can to like cut through them or like, you know, kind of pull around them. Uh, I'm you know, thinking of this as more of a rustic loaf of bread. I just want there to be enough of a cut 
in it that it has room to expand and really, you know, expel that gas and get huge. And cover it, oven, uh, you know, 500 degrees actually for the first 15 minutes. Dropped it to 450 for another 15 minutes. So it was in for 30. Here it comes. It's out. And you can see, boom, big, awesome oven spring. And then back in the oven, we'll get some beautiful color on it. And this is what it looked like when it was done. And yes, there are two. Of course I made two. Why wouldn't I make two? And there's one that you see on your left, my right, and it's darker. That one has a little bit more chocolate in it, just like in this recipe. The other one is a little lighter on the chocolate, and I used a different. I was experimenting, but uh, the one that you see is the one that we've been following along, the one that's darker. Anyway, now it needs to cool for two hours. If you don't let it cool for two hours, you're going to get this. You're going to cut into it, and the chocolate's going to be too hot, and you're just going to smear chocolate everywhere, and it's going to be a mess. There's going to be chocolate all over your bread knife. Chocolate's going to be bleeding out of the bread. I know an hour could be good for like a sandwich loaf, maybe for a sourdough round, but not for dark chocolate, sourdough, chocolate chip bread. It's got to cool. So give it a good two hours before you get into it. And then it'll be still slightly warm, I promise. But the chocolate chips will hold together. And you can still see like some of the streaks on some of these pieces. And it looks cool like that. Um, I don't mind that. But um, definitely don't listen to the people in your house that are saying, just cut into it. It's fine. It'll be fine. It's going to be good. Let's have some chocolate bread. Um, yeah, just hold your ground. You've got to wait. It's better if you do. Anyway, uh, this is a very simple variation uh, to make some chocolate bread. Uh, I, it's not a stretch. Like this is not. We're not adding a lot of difficulty here. Just like a. This is an easy progression from making a sourdough round to now you're making something. Like just the end product is a very different thing. Um, we enjoyed it a little bit more on the cooled off side. So you could toast it by all means. Go for it. I mean, I could imagine toasting this and damn, let's go ice cream, right? Um, peanut butter and jelly on chocolate bread, kind of awesome. And or just toasted warm and like just shake a little powdered sugar on there. Uh, simple breakfast, maybe some strawberries or something. Ooh, powdered sugar, a little strawberry jam or something. Um, anyway, you do whatever the heck you want with it to make it delicious for you and your family. Um, but my girls have been really digging it like as like a breakfast bread, just a slice and then whatever else they're having. Um, pretty amazing stuff. So try it out. Comments, questions? Recipe down below.